Buddha, a light in every home. In the name of Allah, all praise be to Allah and may blessings and peace be on the Messenger of Allah, the last Messenger, uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his uh, honorable companions and family. Uh, dear viewers, Assalamu Alaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh. This is Hatim Al Hajj. I will be your, your host today in place of uh, Sheikh Muhammad uh, Salah. Uh, who is your regular host at Ask uh, Huda, and inshallah he'll be with you from the next episode. Uh, and I hope to do uh, uh, a job as close to uh, uh, good as uh, uh, he does. Uh, and I will uh, be receiving, we will be receiving your questions at uh, two phone numbers here, as well as uh, the uh, program's email. Uh, the numbers are 002 023 uh, They will uh, be showing uh, from time to time on the screen here. Uh, the other number is 9 instead of the 8 at uh, the end. Uh, the email will be ask at huda.tv. Uh, ask at huda.tv. Uh, we will start by t taking your questions. Uh, and uh, whenever we uh, have a chance to cover some of the pending questions from the last episode, we will do that, inshallah, as well. Uh, maybe we'll start with uh, one of the questions that we had from, last, from the last episode, and I'll start in the order the questions were received. I have a question here from uh, Sister Halima from Nigeria, uh, which says, is it permissible to attack people in their places of worship if we are not at war with them. Uh, uh, the, the question may, may, may uh, uh, some of you may think it, it does not warrant like an answer because it is uh, <clears throat> almost a given that you don't. Uh, but sometimes uh, you do need to clarify uh, those issues and you need to confirm uh, that which is considered uh, given by some may not be considered uh, given by others. Certainly, if you're not at war with, uh, with uh, people, you do not uh, only not attack them in their worship places, but you just uh, not attack them uh, in general. Uh, so it, it is not just a matter of where, it is a matter of, in principle, uh, you will not uh, attack uh, those people uh, that you are not in a state of war with them, and uh, when are you in a state of war with a people when it is a justifiable uh, war? But that's a, a totally uh, different issue and it may require an episode by itself to, to, to talk about the details of when uh, is a war just, uh, justifiable. I think we are having a phone call here. Uh, Abdul Wahid from Canada is our first phone call. Yes, Brother Abdul Wahid. Brother. Uh, go ahead, brother. Assalamu uh, alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Yes, uh, yes, I have uh, a couple questions. The first one, it is allowed to file bankruptcy. Uh, the second question is my wife is a convert, so I want to know what is the ruling regarding her family drinking habits? Drinking? And uh, drinking her habits, habits, like the, the people drink, like you often. So, uh, drinking in any, 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 any wh wh where are they drinking? Uh, yeah, well, they are drinking alcohol, as you know. Uh, at your home, I mean, they drink alcohol at your home or where? 
Well, it's like, uh, you know, when you go to them, like, the, uh, the inviters, you know, we go to them and then they start drinking sometimes, you know, so, which is, I, I disagree with, and I, um, but my wife wants to know what is the ruling about this, like, what is, uh, I know that it's, it's you know, it's, uh, it's, there is a hadith which is say, you know, like, al-khamru uh, haram, hamirihi wa wal-ba'ihi wa, but, uh, want to, you know, get from you the answer. Sure. Inshallah. Okay, brother. Jazakallah khairan. Uh, well, as, as for the, the first question, is it allowed to file bankruptcy? Uh, it, it depends. Uh, bankruptcy has a basis in Islam. Uh, in Islam, uh, when someone has uh, been uh, afflicted, by loss of his assets, loss of his uh, capital, and he has debts. Uh, that person is, is actually given uh, some <clears throat> uh, sort of concessions uh, that do not apply to other people. Uh, in fact, uh, Jabba reports that a man has been afflicted by uh, so, some major uh, hardship, financial hardship that uh, that sort of uh, annihilated his assets. Uh, he bought uh, crops uh, and, and he lost uh, on those crops a great deal of money. His assets were uh, wiped out. So the Prophet ﷺ said to his uh, creditors, take what you have, what you see, and you're not entitled to anything else. Take what is there and you're not entitled to anything else, which means uh, you cannot uh, go be after this person for more. Uh, you know, so um, this person will be uh, interdicted. Uh, uh, in other words, the, the seizure of the money will take place. The assets uh, that he has will take place. During that process, uh, the maintenance of the person and his household will go out of this uh, money. So that he will be given uh, some for his own uh, maintenance and uh, his household as well, uh, but people can't take more out of him uh, than what they uh, can find with him or they can uh, identify as some of his assets. Uh, so it does have some basis in, in Islam. Procedures may be different, but the bottom line is one may apply for uh, bankruptcy or may file bankruptcy if one des deserves uh, to, to file a bankruptcy. Uh, so in other words, if you do this uh, as the process tells you, uh, you do not cheat, you do not lie, you do not, cheating or lying applies to writing as much as it applies to uh, speech. So you cannot lie in speech, the same applies to writing as well. You cannot apply in, you cannot uh, cheat or uh, lie in uh, writing. So if you if you are not going to have to to do that, then you can go ahead and uh, uh, file bankruptcy. It would be permissible. There is another call that we will take now. It's Sister Fozia from Nigeria. Go ahead, Sister Fozia. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullah, sister. Um, um, my question is, what is the ruling? on consuming vinegar that we normally find in salad creams and ketchup. Do you What's the ruling of consu consuming vinegar? Vinegar that we find in salad creams, ketchup, and the likes. Okay. All right. Uh, so Sister, Sister Fazi is asking about the ruling of consuming vinegar and the reason why she may be asking this because during the process of making vinegar, it goes through a process of fermentation where there is some percentage of uh, uh, alcohol formed in the, uh, and that uh, a liquid. Uh, but then it, it goes through a process uh, where it loses the sweetness uh, the, that it may be found with alcoholic drinks and it becomes the, it keeps the sourness of uh, the alcoholic drinks uh, in a process that is known uh, to, to people who have a background in chemistry. Now, 
uh, we as Muslims are not allowed to turn wine into vinegar. We are not allowed to turn wine into uh, vinegar. Why? Because the Prophet Sallallahu had uh, forbidden us from uh, sort of dealing with wine in any way, shape, or form. Even when uh, uh, some orphans had wine and uh, the Prophet Sallallahu was approached uh, about their case, whether it would be permissible to turn their wine into uh, vinegar, and the Prophet ﷺ said, no, it is for, forbidden. Uh, that sent a clear message that we have nothing to do with wine. Uh, if anyone's uh, property or assets would, should be protected, then it is the, the orphan's property or asset. But since this property or asset uh, was actually wine, then it, it may not be uh, protected in this case, even by turning it into uh, uh, vinegar. So we as Muslims should not do this. Now, if the wine turned into vinegar by itself or through the doing of someone else, other, you know, I was not involved in uh, getting this wine, making this wine uh, vinegar, uh, would it be permissible for me uh, to, 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 to use that uh, vinegar or to consume that vinegar. Well, the Prophet ﷺ said, نَعْمَ الْإِدَامُ الْخَلْ which means that what a good uh, food is vinegar. Uh, idam is the food that you eat with bread. It is whatever it is that you uh, eat using bread. Uh, so the, the Prophet ﷺ said, what a good food uh, to eat with bread is vinegar, which means that vinegar is permissible to use. Therefore, if the vinegar has, uh, if the vinegar came from wine through uh, just the natural process, uh, or uh, through uh, the the doing of someone other than you, then it is permissible for you to use that vinegar and to consume it. I am having another phone call here, uh, Sister Aisha from Egypt. Uh, you may go ahead. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as salam wa rahmatullah. Uh, Sheikh, uh, please, is there any ruling about uh, sexual harassment and racism in Islam? And if there is any, what are the rulings? Uh, sister, would you please repeat that? Okay. Is there any ruling in the Quran or in Islam about sexual harassment? Sexual harassment. And racism. And racism. Yes. If there, if there is any, please, can you let us know about it? Sure. Thank you. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum salaam. Well, I think the question uh, from Sister Aisha here uh, from Cairo is about sexual harassment uh, and racism. And if there is a ruling in the Quran or Sunnah or in the Deen about sexual harassment and uh, racism. Uh, uh, certainly, sexual harassment comes in grade and in, in degrees. Some of it may be uh, a, a major crime in Islam, an enormity in Islam. Some of it may be uh, less of a crime, um, not necessarily an enormity, but at any rate, it would be uh, still a sin and a crime, uh, no matter what. If it, if it can be classified under sexual uh, harassment, uh, in other words, someone who is not uh, a spouse uh, approaches the, 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 a person of the other gender, or maybe sometimes of the same gender, in a sexual way uh, uh, that is unacceptable and inappropriate, uh, or seeks uh, you know, sec uh, involvement in sexual relation with that person in a way that is unacceptable uh, Islamically. So certainly that is completely forbidden. If it is forbidden to look uh, for a second time uh, out of temptation or with desire or with lust, to have a second look at a person of the opposite gender if you have lust, and some many of the scholars said even without lust, just a second look would not be uh, permissible because the first look everybody does that because if you're walking in the street you're not going to be able to look down all the time uh, so certainly with that uh, you know uh, it is quite clear that the sexual harassment would be considered a an enormity 
uh, and the, the, the more aggressive it, it is, uh, it becomes uh, more of a crime. The issue of racism is an issue that is sort of like, it's cut and dry in Islam. Uh, you know, the Prophet وسلم, said, Ya ayyuha nas, inna rabbakum wahad, wa inna abakum wahad, O people, uh, this hadith is reported by Ahmad from Jabir authentically, O people, your Lord is one and your Father is one. ألا لا فضل لعربي على عجمي ولا لأسود على أحمر على أبيض إلا بالتقوى There is no virtue for an Arab over an un-Arab or an un-Arab over an Arab or white over black or, uh, or black over oriental except uh, through piety and then the Prophet ﷺ recited the verses in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said يا أيها الذين أمنوا إن خلقناكم من ذكر وأنثى وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعرفوا إن أكرمكم and Allah Aqtaqum, all you who believed, we have created you from a single male and single female and made you into nations and tribes that you may know one another. Uh, most certainly, uh, the, the, most pi the, the, the most honorable of you in the sight of Allah is the most pious. The Prophet went to the, to, to the extent of saying to someone who made a racial slayer against another one of the Sahaba, uh, uh, You are a man that has jahiliya in him, uh, and jahiliya is the pre-Islamic disbelief, a pre-Islamic system of dis disbelief. It means ignorance, uh, pre-Islamic ignorance or a pre-Islamic system of uh, disbelief in general. Uh, this was said to a Sahabi that was one of the honorable Sahaba, but uh, since the, 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 the violation was a huge violation, the Prophet ﷺ felt that uh, uh, exhortation or uh, you know rebuking him now has to, to be in a very uh, strong in very strong wording or has to take very strong wording uh, so that's why he made that uh, statement so that should also be quite clear that this is uh, forbidden in Islam and this is a reflection of uh, egotism a reflection of uh, prejudice a reflection of kibr uh, that uh, is the greatest sin and the first sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was first disobeyed by the kibr of Iblis, the kibr of the shaitan who refused to prostrate before Adam out of arrogance, uh, self-conceit uh, and uh, uh, prejudice. So I, I think I'm having another phone call. So. Uh, uh, I have Brother Hassan from Nigeria. Welcome, Brother Hassan. Go ahead, Brother. Okay. Uh, we have Brother Abdul Qadir now from Nigeria instead. Okay. Uh, maybe I'll have a chance now to say the, the to to answer the question about the family of the the family uh, the in-laws of the brother who called from Canada who drink. Um, so he said that his wife is a convert and his in-laws uh, drink. And I, I asked where, where the where do they drink because if they drink at their home, then I, I don't know what what you know what he can do about this. Uh, aside from giving them dawah to Islam uh, and subsequently uh, to, uh, you know, abandoning wine. Uh, but if they drink in his presence, and that's probably what he was asking, the, that they drink in his uh, presence or his wife's presence. Now, the, the, the directions from the Prophet ﷺ here are quite clear that we should not be involved in this uh, uh, involved with wine in any way, shape, or form. A hadith of Anas, in which Anas said that the Prophet ﷺ, uh, invoked the curse of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon ten people who, uh, who deal with uh, wine. Uh, it included the, wa the one who uh, sits with someone who is drinking. Uh, Jalis, Jalisaha is the one who sits in the presence of wine or in the presence of someone uh, who is uh, drinking. Now, uh, uh, so what should be done in this case? And I, I think that a little bit of smartness needs to be used in this case. Sometimes if you are um, at their home and they are drinking, uh, the wife, which is the convert, needs to keep herself busy doing things 
uh, at home, doing chores at home, you know, taking the garbage out, you know, uh, t t cleaning the kitchen. They all appreciate that. No one doesn't appreciate that. Uh, you know, it's, a, it's always a, uh, like a welcome help. Uh, so if she does that and keeps herself busy doing that and avoid uh, the, 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 the very place where they are uh, drinking, then that, that is a way out of being uh, in the presence of wine while people are drinking it or in the presence of people who are drinking wine. If they go out to some place, then it could be a little bit more cumbersome and a little bit more difficult to, uh, to sort of get yourself out of it, out of the dilemma. Uh, of them drinking, uh, you know, at the same table. And in this case, I think it has to be uh, a matter of just uh, setting the limits and saying that uh, I can't go this far. You know, I, I am very willing to uh, accommodate the, the, the differences amongst us and so on and so forth, but this far I can't go. And honestly speaking, a lot of people will, will not have much trouble with this. Uh, when they go out with you, uh, they will just drink something else other than uh, alcoholic uh, beverages. Uh, and uh, over time, I mean, if you stay firm, and uh, uh, over time they will appreciate uh, your commitment to your principles. I, I'm having another phone, phone call here. I have a phone call from Umm Muhammad from the UAE. Uh, welcome, Umm Muhammad. Fadli. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, is it permitted in uh, Islam to take homeopathic medicine for uh, non-critical illness? Uh, is it permissible in Islam to take homeopathic medicine for a non-critical illness? Illness. Uh, and yeah, and my ahead. second question. Can go I ahead. ask the second question? Sure, go ahead, sister. Yeah, uh, what is the ruling about the second jama'ah, the second congregate uh, jama'ah after the the first one, the, con the congregational prayer? Okay. Well, first of all, homeopathic medicine. Homeopathic medicine, just to make you uh, t t aware of it, it is basically very diluted uh, substances uh, that are usually taken from the environment. Uh, and it, it, it is extremely diluted. Uh, but the people who believe in homeopathic medicine, they believe in its effect and so on and so forth. Maybe conventional medicine is not so much uh, fond of homeopathic medicine or they don't believe in it so much, the people who practice conventional medicine. Yet, if someone believes in it and believes it helps from certain diseases, you may very well go ahead and use it for critical or non-critical illness. <clears throat> I would suggest that for critical illness that you do see some uh, physician that is a conventional physician, uh, because that is the type of medicine that is known to be most effective to the very vast majority of people. But for a non-critical illness such as cold or something of that nature, you may certainly experiment with homeopathic medicine uh, if you desire, uh, that would be absolutely permissible. The Prophet Sallallahu said to Dawah Ibad Allah, uh, seek treatment to all servants of Allah. Uh, the second jama'at, and I think that uh, you're asking uh, this, uh, you're asking about certain people who come into the masjid late and they find the first jama'at to be over and they want to establish a second jama'at. What would be the ruling here? We have one Sahabi who prayed the second uh, Jama'ah with a group of people that came late with him, which is Anas ibn Malik, and we have another Sahabi, Abdullah ibn Saud, uh, who did not pray a sec the, the second Jama'ah, but rather took his disciples and went back uh, home to, to, to pray. Uh, what does that mean? It, uh, it, the, the scholars who believe that establishing a second Jama'ah is absolutely fine and uh, not a problem at all, they say that this used to be, this was a time, the, the action of Abdullah bin Mas'ud, when he uh, went back home and, and prayed the second the Jama'at at, at home. Uh, this used to be during a time of fitna, trials and tribulations. Uh, some people were starting to rebel against the rulership of Uthman radiallahu anhu. So if Abdullah bin Mas'ud was found in the masjid of the Prophet ﷺ to be making a second Jama'at, after the Jama'ah of Uthman ibn Affan, maybe a visitor from outside of Medina 
would see this and would think that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud is actually avoiding to pray behind Uthman radiallahu anhu, take this back home, and then the rumors start to spread and cause more uh, damage. Uh, so he, he, fa he, he uh, favored praying at home because of that reason. Now, I may also say that, uh, uh, or to reconcile between the, the practice of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud and that of Anas ibn Malik, some of the scholars said that if you have a masjid that has an established uh, congregation, an established congregation, uh, and, and an imam that is a regular imam of the masjid, an imam ratib or a regular imam of the masjid, then you do not pray a second uh, jama'ah because the masjid, they may have their own functions, they may want to start a lecture, they may want to do this or do that. Uh, and you pray individually. You pray uh, individually if you come in uh, late. That is personally the position that I believe in, but uh, it is a, quite a controversial issue. And if you see someone established in a second jama'ah in the masjid, that is the position of uh, multitudes of scholars. So don't uh, uh, condemn them for that. It, uh, but uh, my own position that I believe in is that if, the, if this is a masjid that has a, an established congregation, and the regular imam, uh, then uh, don't establish a second jama'ah. Unless you get like a sort of a clear permission, uh, whether it's ongoing permission or uh, like a random one uh, from the imam of that congregation. And the congregation itself does not uh, feel anything wrong about you establishing a second jama'ah and you're not interrupting any of their functions and so on and so forth. In this case, you can have a second jama'ah. I'm having another phone call. Abd brother Abdul Hakim from Nigeria. Welcome, Brother Abdul Hakim. Go ahead, Brother. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I have two questions, inshallah. Yes, Brother. Number one is football forbidden in Islam? Football. Uh, yes. Is it forbidden in Islam? Like soccer? Yes, soccer, yes. Okay. No, 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 the first question. Can I give you the second question? Go ahead, Afi. Uh -huh. I, I, uh, my father has a business. And uh, after, after his death, must we all divide the business into pieces or can we divide it uh, in terms of shares and a particular member of the family continue running the business while after a year we can share the profit? Hello? Okay, okay. can you repeat that? Uh, I'm talking of inheritance in Islam. Inheritance, okay. <laughs> For somebody's father who has a business, a going business, and is, is, is now dead. Okay. Must we divide the asset into pieces or can we put it into shares and give every person who is entitled to the inheritance a particular percentage that is due to him and a okay, member I of think the brothers I think that the, the, yeah, they, they got your question so I uh, yeah, I will answer the question inshallah after the break uh, I'll t I'll take the I'll take the football one now and I will uh, answer the other one after the break inshallah uh, the, the, uh, football is not haram in Islam. Soccer is not haram in Islam. Soccer would be haram if it leads to haram. Uh, so if it keeps you away from your prayer, then, uh, you know, until the time of the prayer goes out, then it is haram. If, it, uh, if any sport per se requires the, the performance of something that is haram, then it is haram. If it keeps you away from something that is wajib, uh, then it is haram. But uh, in, in general, uh, if it does not require you to do something that's haram or keep you from something that is wajib, uh, then sports in general would 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 be permissible, uh, including uh, soccer. I have another phone call. Yes, Sister Aisha. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, go ahead, Sister Aisha. Uh, welcome, Sister. Go ahead. Um, so uh, I have uh, three questions. My first question is, I want to know if it's allowed in Islam to tie your hair by...
Okay. Uh, inshallah, when we come back from the break, we will answer the questions that we uh, uh, need to answer from the brothers. The straight path. In the final. It's an ayah that we recite every day, in every rak'ah, in every salah. al-mustaqim. Guide us to the straight path. So, how can we live by it? Join me every week, inshallah, as we discover how. I'll take your phone calls. So, we have Brother Mukhtar from Nigeria with us on the phone. Brother Mukhtar, assalamu alaikum. And share your thoughts from all around the world. I ask Allah to make everything that we say and hopefully implement on this program a step on the straight path to Jannah. The Straight Path with Osama El Shami live every Monday night only on Hoda TV. Hoda TV would like to know what you think of our program. What do you like about Hoda TV? How can we improve? What are your favorite programs and why? Who are your favorite presenters? Let us know via email, Facebook or Twitter and then tune in to our new program, Viewers Pulse. We want to hear your opinions, so let us know. All of this and more in Viewers Pulse, only on Hoda TV. Assalamu alaikum, welcome back. Uh, well, uh, we have two questions from before. One, the first one was uh, about the division of inheritance. Uh, and uh, the question was from uh, a brother from Nigeria who was asking whether it is uh, after you know, their, their father died and their father left them a, a, a business, uh, whether it would be permissible to keep the business uh, and divide the profit of that business according to uh, their shares, or uh, should they go ahead and divide uh, the business itself into uh, their respective shares? And they can do either way. They can do either way. As long as uh, the business, uh, even if they keep the business as a whole, uh, but the, 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 the ownership of that business is divided, the ownership of the business is divided amongst them according to their shares. Uh, they can dissolve the business and take uh, each one takes their share or they can carry on with the business uh, let's say it's like a one store they can carry on uh, as long as the ownership of that store is divided according to their various shares and then they can conduct the business uh, the, in, in partnership thereafter and divide the profit the question that uh, we had from the sister before the break, right before the break, I think she had more than one question, but uh, she got cut off. But the one that we, ha that we heard is the is, was about the permissibility of selling hair. Human hair is not allowed to be used for wigs or it's not allowed uh, to be used by other human beings to uh, uh, add volume <coughs> to their hair. Uh, and uh, therefore selling it for that purpose is not permissible. Selling body organs in general is not permissible. Uh, selling body organs in general uh, would not be uh, permissible. Now, if that hair, uh, if that uh, uh, human hair is uh, is, uh, is used for something else that is uh, not impermissible and someone uh, will cut their hair and then they will be offered money for that hair which will be uh, used for a purpose that is a permissible uh, purpose, then it would be a different uh, condition here. Uh, and uh, in, in that case, uh, the, the, there, it, it might be permissible if there is an identifiable use. The scholars, the scholars talked about things that have no benefit uh, and things that uh, are 
uh, useless or purposeless and the prohibition of setting things that are useless or uh, purposeless. Some of the things that the scholars identified as useless or purposeless uh, may end up having some a particular use or benefit and if they ended up having a particular use or benefit that is a legitimate one, uh, then that item becomes sellable uh, once again. Uh, what is forbidden is to sell to your brother something that is of no use or uh, no uh, benefit. I think I will uh, have a chance here to co cover a, another question from a, a previous uh, episode. This is a question from um, uh, some sister from Bangladesh, uh, Sister Razia from Bangladesh. Uh, and she's asked, I vowed to fast on a Friday, uh, which I did. However, people are now advising me uh, that I should have uh, fasted uh, the day before or after. Uh, what is your opinion? Uh, they were right. Uh, you don't want to single out Friday uh, with uh, fasting. Uh, so you should have added a day before or a day after as they advised. Uh, I work, uh, I have another question here from uh, Um uh, Muayyad from Athens, Greece. I work in the human resources division of a commercial bank. However, the sister who vowed to fast on Friday and she already fasted, her vow has been fulfilled. Uh, so the vow has been fulfilled, but they were right in advising her to fast the day before or the day after. Uh, Sister Umm Muayyad uh, from Athens, Greece says, I work in the human resources division of a commercial bank. Is this halal or haram? Um, in the human resources division of a commercial bank. Uh, the, the, for, for this sister here, she will not be interacting directly uh, firsthand with usurious contracts or the, the usurious transactions. Therefore, it, uh, it is not uh, a, uh, sort of incumbent upon her to leave her work tomorrow, uh, but she should certainly look for another job and once she finds a job, another suitable job. She should earnestly look for another suitable job and once she finds it, uh, then she should leave uh, to it. Uh, yet, since she is not directly involved in uh, a, a transaction that is uh, a usurious transaction, uh, she may still work in her bank if she does not find another suitable uh, job despite looking uh, for one. And why does she need to leave the bank in the first place if she did find another suitable job? Uh, because the, uh, she, although she is not directly involved in any usurious transaction or forbidden transaction, she is actually working, uh, helping hire the people who will do that job. So she is uh, close to the close to the zone uh, of uh, sin and therefore she should not uh, help them on uh, uh, this uh, particular business which is, which is a forbidden one. I am having a phone call now. Brother Abdul Hakim from Nigeria. Go ahead, brother. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, question is on contemporary fix on the issue of organ donation. For example, it has been shown now that people can donate their kidneys and uh, so probably retainer of the AI for other people. So is it permissible for me as a Muslim to write it as my wasiya that if I die, a particular part of my body that can still be useful to others be removed for their use. Is it permissible Islamically? To write in your wasaya that if you die, a part of your body will be donated. May be donated for other people who need it. For other people is who it need it. Islamically? Yes, it is, brother. It is permissible Islamically. Do you understand my question, Sheikh? Hmm? 
Did you have another question? I said, did you, under, you, you understand this? You're, you're asking about organ donation, if it is permissible for you to write in your wasiya or your will that your organs may be harvested and given to people who need them. Yes, that's what I'm looking at. Yeah, and the answer to this is it is permissible. It is permissible. Uh, you know, organ donation would be permissible given, you know, there are certain conditions here. Uh, uh, for, for the vast majority of uh, organs, there, there is a separate discussion about certain organs such as reproductive organs, but for the vast majority of organs, uh, it is permissible, uh, given that there will be no harm to the donor, uh, and given that this is not a, a sale, uh, this is uh, basically a complete charitable transaction, not a form of a sale. We are not permitted to sell our organs. Uh, therefore, sales would not be permissible to, uh, in all cases. Uh, but for someone to say that, take it from my cadaver after I die from my dead body, uh, that is p p permissible for sure, according to the very vast majority of the scholars of Islam, and according to the resolutions of al Majama al Faqiyya, the Fiqh Assemblies, the one that belongs to the OIC Organization of Islamic Conference, the one that belongs to uh, the Muslim League or Rabbit al Alam al Islami, those Fiqh Assemblies said that this would be uh, permissible because now you, uh, they, you, they have your approval, uh, it's a cadaver, therefore there will not be harm to the donor, uh, and it is donation, it is not uh, sale. Uh, therefore, it would be permissible according to the very vast majority of Muslim scholars, contemporary ones. Uh, and I, I, I can uh, answer another question uh, here from uh, another uh, uh, Brother from uh, brother Abdul Hakim from Malaysia. He's asking if it is okay to sell his pet cat. Uh, the cats are okay to to sell. Uh, if if you have a pet cat, it is fine to sell it. What's forbidden is to sell a certain type of animal that's called the sinawar, which it has. Uh, it sort of belongs to the same family of cats, but it is not a cat. Uh, and uh, it is forbidden also to sell uh, dogs. Uh, those are animals that are forbidden to sell, aside from the other animals that would be uh, unclean uh, animals or uh, aside items of sale that would be forbidden for other causes. Uh, it is also forbidden to sell dogs and this particular animal, which is an hour from the cat family, yet it is like a vicious, bigger animal. It's, it's more vicious and bigger than a cat. I don't recall the, the translation of Sinawar at this point, but it is from the cat family, vicious and bigger uh, than a cat. Uh, but a cat, per se, would be permissible to sell. I have another question here. Uh, uh, that says, it's a question from uh, uh, Sister Myra Anwar from Pakistan, she says, if the Imam does not allow time for the followers to recite Surah Fatiha, uh, what should uh, they do? Uh, the Imam may or may not allow time for the followers to recite Al-Fatiha. It's a controversial issue and uh, many scholars said that the Imam should not really uh, pause between his recitation of Al-Fatiha and uh, the subsequent uh, surah. Uh, and some of the scholars uh, said that the Imam may, may give a, a chance for the people who need to recite Al Fatiha between his recitation of Al Fatiha and the subsequent surah. So it's a controversial matter. Your Imam may be this or that. Uh, if he does not allow you, then you recite Al Fatiha with him while he is. If you know that your Imam does not allow for a pause, then you recite Al-Fatiha with him, or when he is 
reciting the following uh, surah. He tried to recite it quickly because the Fatiha, according to the position of Imam Shafi'i, which is the cho one chosen by Imam Bukhari and many others, uh, is a must to be recited by everyone, whether he is the Imam or uh, the Ma'mum. Jazakumullah uh, khairan wa barakallahu feekum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allah is my heart's speech, your mercy is what I beseech, keep in my heart your remembrance.